Well, good evening. Uh, welcome to the live stream. Uh, Apostle Chastine Rock here. Dr. Ellis sitting over there with me tonight. And uh, we're glad to come into your home. Uh, this is our regular Bible study. And uh, we're glad that you guys have uh, invested the time. Uh, those of you that are coming on now, those of you that will be watching a little later on, uh, we're always happy that you invest in yourself and to uh, bring forth more understanding of the Word of God, receiving more revelation so that you and your family, all right, and it's not just you and your family, but those that you know, your businesses, your church, everything that you're involved in, every sphere of life that God has brought around you, uh, that you can be a influential person for the kingdom of God in those particular areas. And so we thank you. Uh, thank God that you're on tonight with us. Uh, we believe that what we say and the things that we bring before you will open up uh, new streams of whatever is necessary to flow into your life, that you might be a better uh, understanding and more knowledgeable uh, Christian, a believer, a voice for God in the earth, and to be able to share the power of the Word of God with whoever you're around or whatever atmosphere that you might be in, okay? And so thank you for being on tonight. Um, much said, you and I tonight and uh, maybe for the next two nights, uh, I'm looking at this. Uh, we're going to be talking about a faith that will actually trust God, okay? Faith that will actually trust God, okay? Again, faith, all right, that which pleases God. Faith, that which gives us victories, okay? According to Hebrews 11, 6, according to 1 John 5, 4, faith, okay, that what pleases God, and faith, that guess what, gives us victories. Without faith, we can't please God. Without faith, we can't have victories. So for the next couple of nights, uh, you and I, and those of you that are willing to spend the time, uh, we're going to invest in the revelations of the Word of God so that we might better uh, condition ourselves, prepare ourselves for the great kindness, the passion that God has for goodness to come on people, okay? He's always had a passion for His goodness to be on everybody's life. And so we want to look at those things because as many as God can actually have to share His goodness. Remember what it says in Chronicles? He's always looking... He's always going. His eyes are going forth throughout the earth. He's seeking, and he's still looking. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still looking for those that he can show himself strong to. He wants to show his passion for life and his goodness to men. And so I believe that you're one of those people, two of those people, five or six in your home, your church filled, your business filled uh, with the power of God, uh, operating through faith, okay? Now, it took faith for you to be born again. So we don't throw out being born again. If you'll see the sign here, it says Jesus saves. We know it takes faith to be born again. But it also takes faith to please God in this life. And it takes faith to win the victories that you and I are challenged with every day. Okay? And if you think that you've never been challenged in life to, to walk in defeat or to be disappointed or to be discouraged, or to lose things, I'm telling you right now, just keep on living, okay? Because we have an adversary who does not want to see you walking in the goodness of God, nor you being a witness of that goodness, to share that with everyone. What would happen if no one had a bad thought towards someone else in this world? What if no one ever took up, or take, took, would take up something to harm somebody in this world? What if everybody was at peace with everybody in this world? What if everybody uh, had the resources that they need to do everything that they wanted to do? Money was not an equation. What, what, what if we had all the health that we desired to have to live long, healthy lives and whatever? What if all these things were a part? It would be almost like we would have days of heaven on the earth. And this is God's will for us, to have days of heaven on the earth, to live with him and walk in his goodness, and it all requires faith, our faith, trusting him. And so tonight and tomorrow night and Friday night, again, I'm going to be talking about a faith that you and I can live in and walk in every day, that we can trust him no matter what comes up, that we have faith that no matter what comes up, we can trust God, okay? And this is the way 
uh, God wants us to live, all right? So would you please come over with me to Romans chapter 4 tonight. Now, I know I said a lot uh, in the beginning, and, uh, you know, we try to watch our time with you, but it's important for you to understand that all of the things that are going on in the world today can be overcome by the faith that God has given to us. All of the, the lack, the, you know, the, the disappointments, and certainly they come. Everybody has been disappointed in some way, rejected in something or whatever. But the victory that faith gives us is to keep our eyes on God, knowing that God calls those things which be not as though they were until they are. In other words, God can give you a word. God can give you a word today that can fix next year. God can give you a word today that can fix tomorrow. It can fix right now, okay? The whole thing is, do you have the faith to trust him when he brings you a word? Not, not the word that he gives me, okay? But the word that he gives you, okay? The direct, okay, the direct promise, not the general promise to everybody, okay? As uh, Abraham's children down through the ages received the general promise that God would always be with them and whatever, but the direct promise, like with God walking with Abraham, that Abraham was actually God's friend, okay? And so we need to separate ourselves in certain things to know and to understand that God has given this directly to me. It's not for everybody, okay? Because all of us are different and God wants all of us to go in the pathways that he wants us to walk in. And sometimes in church, all right, you can take scriptures and you can use them and believe that that's all going to happen to you right now without getting any directive from God, whether he wants this to take place now, whether he wants this to take place six months from now, or maybe he doesn't want that to take place in your life at all, all right? Because maybe he has another solution of life for you, and he has another pathway for you to walk, okay? And so you can't just take everything because, you know, you're a person of faith. God bless you. I'm glad you're a person of faith, and you speak faith, and you're saying things. But you still have to be directed by the guide of the church, who's the Holy Spirit. Okay? You can't throw him out of the equation because you got all the scriptures. You can't do that. Okay? Again, you're a child of God. You're not, a, a, you know, a grandchild or you're not a cousin or you're not somebody way out there on the, in the family line. You're a child of God, which means that you're under the tutelage of the Father who's raising us up that we might be the right children, the God kind of children, holy children, children that believe God and trust God and walk in the faith of God so that we might trust God in any circumstance that comes up without putting ourselves or the scripture or our emotions or our preconceived, okay, uh, realities, things that we've heard other people say, well, this happened to me or that happened to me. Well, I did this and this happened and that did, you know, we did this and we did that. Or we sold this and this happened. There's a lot of stuff that can cause a lot of confusion coming to you. And if you don't have a word from God, I'm telling you right now, don't you move. All right. Don't move until you get a word from God. All right. All right. So let's go. Now, I just heard what you said. Well, isn't the Bible the word of God? Yes, it is. Okay. But your name is not written on every scripture. Okay. So you have to understand, I still have to, act by faith, as Jesus tells us, I still have to live by faith, which means that I have to understand faith begins where the will of God is known. And where the will of God is known for me, then guess what? I can walk in that direct promise. Now, there are many general promises here. By his stripes, we are healed. Yes, we are. So I can claim that as a general promise. But we're talking tonight mostly about direct promises so that you can walk in the direct path that God wants you to walk in. Whether I'm walking that path or not, you have to walk according to the scriptures and how God is speaking to you and leading you through the word of God. All right? I think you get the idea. Romans chapter 4. All right? It says in verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. He's talking about Abraham. Before him whom he believed, even God, okay, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Okay? Now we see that God gave uh, uh, Abraham a direct promise about having a son, all right, in his old age. And, and we know the story. You read the story. We've heard the story ever since we've been in church about this this old man and his old wife having a child in their old age when it was to the place of being impossible to have children. See, that's where God works. But he works in that place because he's given you a promise that goes beyond impossibilities. 
And we have to understand that Simeon was the same way. God gave him a promise that, guess what? That he would not die until he saw Israel's Savior. And death could not take him out until the promise was fulfilled. See, that was a direct promise to Simeon. So you and I should seek the direct promises of Almighty God so that the things that God has in our life will line up for us and we can walk in those things regardless of all the things that come and the impossibilities that present themselves to us, we have to know that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man, that he should repent. If he said it, if he promised it to me, I can tell you right now, it's going to happen in my lifetime. It may not happen, you know, a year from now because I want it to happen right now, but God is not going to renege on his promises because he knows that once he's spoken his word, it has to be fulfilled. He knows that, all right? So it says this, that, you know, Abraham believed God, that God could raise the dead and God could call those things which be not as though they were. Okay. Now I want you to come on go with me to Genesis chapter 22. All right. We're talking about this faith of Abraham again, faith that pleased God and faith that won victories. Okay. Because it's absolutely necessary for you to understand these things in these days so that you can endure to the end. Okay, because there are a lot of people that are not enduring. There are a lot of people that say they love the Lord, and now they're acting like they never knew him. All right, remember Peter, rooster crowing? All right, Jesus told him, he said, in a few moments, you're going to act like you never even knew me. All right, again, what happens? Adversity comes. See, adversity comes. Adversity comes. All right, Genesis chapter 22. Now, I'm always reading out of the King James Version. And uh, you guys can read out of any version that you guys really want to. Uh, but the point and the revelation will come based on understanding Abraham. I believe that if every Christian, every person that's born again, would go back and understand where their faith began, right? When it comes to pleasing God and walking in victories, you'll go back to our father of faith. This is why Abraham is called the father of faith. Okay, just like Satan is called the father of all lies, Abraham is called the father of faith because guess what? God instructed him, gave him a promise. He took it in his heart. He became the friend of God and becoming the friend of God, he established himself as the father of faith to us. And now this is where our faith comes from. Just like the color in your eyes, uh, the hair on your head, uh, the way your body is shaped or whatever. Guess what? It came from someone in your family line. So we look for faith in Abraham, and when we can understand the faith that Abraham walked in, then guess what? We can begin to understand the things that Jesus was showing us in the New Testament so that we can live by faith and have the victories and please God, you know, and, and enjoy life, okay? And that's what every one of you want. I, I don't believe there's anyone watching tonight that just got up this morning and just said, man, I want to have a terrible day. Let everything, you know, devastating happen to me. No. You got up this morning believing that the best is going to take place, that God's favor is going to come in your life, that open doors are going to happen in your life. You got up this morning believing that, guess what, divine surprises are going to come on you. That's the life that you and I live. But we also have to live in that great expectation. We have to also work our faith walk out so that we can please God and obtain those victories that we're believing for every day. Amen. Now it says here in chapter 22, and it came to pass that after that, that God did uh, test Abraham, and he said unto him, Abraham, uh, and he said, Behold, I'm here. And he said, uh, Take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, okay, whom thou lovest. Look at, look at God talking to him. Oh, you love this boy, all right, that thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Now he's telling him, listen, I know you love your son, but I want you to come up and offer him to me. All right? That's a big, big request. All right? That's a, that's a monumental request. Okay? And, and it says, Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place which God had told him. Now, you notice that there's no scripture that says that he had a conversation with Sarah about this. Because Sarah would have been going, you going where? With who? With my, my baby? I just, you know, all these years I've been waiting for it, and you're going to do what? All right? See, again, Abraham did not allow adversity to come 
against what God had told him to do. See, and this is what you have to watch out for when you are believing God and God speaks to you, the things that bring adversity to you because adversity can outweigh God's goodness. It's been shown many times, okay? Uh, remember Thomas? Thomas said, Thomas didn't say, I couldn't believe. He says, I wouldn't believe or I won't believe until I see this. He didn't say he couldn't, right? And he had seen all the goodness of Almighty God, okay? He had seen Jesus walk, deliver people, heal people, cast out devils. He didn't say I couldn't. He said I wouldn't, all right? And so you have to understand, when you see the goodness of God, there is still the availability of adversities around you that can hinder you. And you'll notice that Abraham did not allow any adversities to take place. He immediately rose up, immediately grabbed Isaac, said, let's go do what God wants me to do. And it says on the third day, he lifted up his eyes. This is Abraham. And, and he saw the place off. And Abraham said to, to his young men, he says, abide here, all right, with the ass. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship and will come again to you. Faith speaks. See, faith, remember what it talks about? We, we talked about this. Faith always has a, a, a positive word to say about the circumstances of what we're involved in. Even though in his mind he knew, Isaac didn't know, he knew what he was going to do. The, the young lads that he took with him, they didn't know. Can you imagine if he'd have told Isaac, you know, and then had told the lads, this is what we're going to do. Can you imagine all of the adversity that he would have faced going there for three days? Can you imagine? And this is why when God promises or gives you a promise or whatever, you can't tell everybody about it. You can't talk to everybody about the things that God had placed in your heart or he shared this with you. There's things that you can't say uh, to people around you because guess what? The first thing that's going to come up is a preconceived uh, a reality that they have about what they heard or somebody else said this or some, some experience over here or this went on or whatever, you know, and, and here comes the cloud of doubt that comes against your conscious man, your, your will man, your emotion man. Here comes the cloud of doubt coming again. That's the adversity that comes. And you've got to watch how God's been so good to you. And then again, again, adversity comes and you go like, man, well, I don't know. And this is why I'm talking to you about a faith that is willing to trust him no matter what. Say, no matter what. All right. And so it says this, Abraham took the wood, took the wood up, laid Isaac, his son on the wood, uh, had the fire in his hand, the knife, and he went, you know, all of, everybody's going to get, he's going together, Isaac and his, and his tools. And it says, and uh, <laughs> boy, verse eight, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. And so they both went up together because Isaac is going like, you know, I see the fire, the wood, <laughs> you know, but where's the, where's the lamb? Where's the ram? Where, you know, there's supposed to be another part in this thing. Abraham says, God will fill in the other part. The part that we don't have, God will make up for it if we trust him. Oh, you got to get this, okay? We don't have it all. You don't have every answer. But you do have your faith. And the part that you do have, if you give that to God, and you give that to making it happen, put some action to it, the part that you don't have, God will make up for it. He will always provide because he always gives more, better than we believe for. All right? And it says, they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, laid the wood on in order, bound Isaac his son. Now, what do you think Isaac is thinking all this time? You told me that God was going to provide a ram. All right? And he says, and he stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abram, 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 Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. Notice he had the will to hear. And he says, uh, lay not thine hand on the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thine son, thine only son from me. Being able to trust him no matter what. And this is why Abraham is a father of faith. Because Abraham demonstrated to the Lord that no matter what situation he put himself, God put him in, that he would trust God. See? 
And this is the, the great faith that you and I, our genealogy comes out of. We, our, our, our whole heritage comes out of going back to this time when he stood there with his son and had a knife over him about ready to slay him before God because he trusted God no matter what was going on. So you and I have some of the same faith, okay? We just have to learn how to exercise it and put it into play so that, you know, when God promises us certain things and even the general promises in the Bible, all right, we are challenged even with those things every day. There's no one in this world that has come into this world that has not come under the scrutiny of the enemy to cause havoc in your life. In some way, down through your finances or people around you, down through relationships, uh, wherever you've gone, traveling, all kinds of things, he finds some kind of way to bring something into your life to keep you from focusing totally on the blessing and the goodness of Almighty God. Okay? Those are called adversities. Okay? And so we have to keep our eyes off of those things when we're going to walk by faith, and we have to keep our eyes on the Lord God. All right? Now, when we get into this, uh, now look at what, we'll just jump over here to, uh, you know we saw the ram, God put the ram there. But verse 17, this is the Lord talking. Well, verse 16, he says, by, by myself I have sworn, saith the Lord, for that, for, because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thine son, thine only son, that in blessing, all right, I will bless thee, and in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. Are you guys, you guys getting this? Because see, this is, this is where your blessings come from. This is, you know, I, I know people argue, well, we shouldn't have all this and whatever. You can say what you want to say. I'm going by our father of faith and what he established from God. And these things are still today a part of your life, see, because you have to have this faith in him for these things to open up and bring themselves because these things, these things are acquainted with and attached to the same faith that Abraham had. That in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall, be, shall possess the gates, the gate of the enemies, of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. You see the power of trusting him no matter what. Yes. This was a greater promise to Abraham even after receiving Isaac. Yes. Because he trusted God no matter what the circumstance dictated. Mm -hmm. See, no matter what adversity came against him, he trusted God beyond the adversity because God had already been so good to him. And a lot of times when God's good to us, okay, we can get to the place where he was good to me in that, but I don't really know if I can trust him for that. See, and that's where the enemy steps in and cuts off your, your blessings. Because God wants us to trust him no matter what. No matter what it looks like to trust him. All right? When Moses was at the Red Sea and the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, and they were standing at the Red Sea, and they had the Red Sea in front of them, and they had the army of Egypt behind them. And, you know, Moses cried out to the Lord, you know, and the Lord said, why are you crying out to me? Take that rod and stretch it out. Don't you trust me, regardless of what it looks like? And Moses stretched that rod out, and it says the sea parted. Mm -hmm. See, why? Because God wants us to trust him no matter what it looks like, no matter how much adversity is around us, you know? No matter what's happening, you have to trust him. And he wants you to get to that place, not just to trust him for this little thing, and then you go, I don't know if I can, I don't know if the Lord wants me to have that. That means you don't trust him to bring that to you. See? See, you don't trust him to do certain things. I'm not just talking about the direct promises, but even the general promises. You don't trust him to do certain things because you, you have not you have not grown in your relationship again. Faith, developing faith, to the point that I can trust him. Again, the, the way you know him is going to determine the dimension of faith that you walk in. And I've said this over and over and over. The, the, the way you know him, not just read about him. Mm -hmm. You know, 
You can read about, you know, uh, Rip Van Winkle. It's how you know God. See, how I know him, and this is why Abraham was called his friend over the book of James. How I know him is going to cause me to walk in certain dimensions of faith because I trust him in that, in that area. And, and the more I walk in that area, he wants me to grow in that area so I can trust him in another dimension of faith. You know, there are many Christians that just trust God just to get to heaven. What a shame. Many Christians just trust the Lord. I just want to make it in. I just want to make it in. I still hear some people today when you talk to them about the Lord, they say, I'm trying to make it in. You know, your faith should, should have already explained to you, you're already in. Now let's believe to do some things in the earth so that somebody else can get in. Let's do some things here that somebody else can see God's goodness on you. See? And so we, we're not trying to do anything. Now, Jesus has done everything for us. All right? Come on, go with me to James. All right? James chapter 2. And I want to jump over to Luke in a moment. James chapter 2 real quick. All right? James chapter 2. You know, somebody's out there saying, oh, man, he's still using the Bible. Uh, he's still using the book. I know you got your smartphones and all that, and that's good. Uh, but, you know, when I was when I was in the Word and I studied the Word, we didn't have smartphones. We we had, we were getting phones in our area. You know, some of you, some of you guys don't even remember when there were just uh, AM and FM radios. I do. All right. A, just AM and FM radios. You know, it wasn't no serious and all that. Just AM and FM radios. You know, and that's all we had. Well, you know, when I grew up and I got in the Word of God, I didn't have all that. I just had the good old Bible, the book. And so I love it because it gives me the opportunity to mark it up and do everything. And, and I've got a bunch of them around here, and they're like old friends. You you know, you're looking and your friend says, remember this? And I go, wow. James chapter 2. Verse 23. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. All right? And he was called the friend of God. Well, aren't you and I the righteousness of Almighty God in Christ Jesus? So we're the friend of God. Hmm? That's right. We're the righteousness of Almighty God in Christ Jesus. You are actually God's will in the earth now. And God does not withhold any good from his will. If you could get a revelation of that, God does not withhold any good from his will, all right? And so because we are the righteousness of Almighty God, we have the privilege now to walk by faith and please God, to live faith every day and please God, you know, to exercise faith every day and please God. What is faith? Again, faith begins where the will of God is known. To exercise faith every day, okay, and to please God, but also to walk in victory every day and please God doesn't say that I have to win every victory of my life in one day. Yeah, I have to continuously live. And so every day, no matter what happens, I should be expecting to come out more than a conqueror, a world overcomer. I should be expecting to come out and representing the kingdom of God as a son of Almighty God, holding down my place as a king and a priest in Christ Jesus. He's made me a king and priest. He's made you a king and priest. And as a, as a priest, I have the ability to speak now, to bless, to look at the situation of things and to come to the Lord God and talk to him about those things and to receive answers. And then I have the opportunity as a king to now my authority to establish those things, to speak those things into existence. And as I speak those things, whether I have to bind and loose things or whether I just have to proclaim things, I am changing things in the spirit realm that's around me so that the things that I want to come out of the spirit realm may come freely to me, my family, my church, my businesses, or whatever I'm involved in. So those things would be a part of my life every day. And that is what it is to walk by faith and to live in faith, to be able to draw those things that, that, are, that are invisible, or those things that seem to be far away, and to bring them into our lives so that we might, might enjoy those things that God had promised us. Well, again, whether it is a direct promise from God or whether it is an indirect promise or a general promise from God, we have to understand I still have to live by faith no matter what promise I'm looking at.
thing, no matter what, okay? So it says that he was a friend of God, okay? And so in understanding the power of righteousness, okay, I keep myself from things. There are certain places I can't go. There are certain things I can't look at. There are certain things that I can't listen to. There are certain people I can't listen to. There are certain things that I can't just say, well, I'm going to go do that because it seems good. There are certain things in my righteous standing with God that guess what? I have to constantly ask the Lord God about and to make sure that I'm not getting myself in this or that or whatever that may not be. It may not be a sin, but it might be a weight. It can slow me down. It can slow me down. It can put a ball and chain on my leg. And so I'm running the race and I'm spending all this energy and I'm huffing and puffing. Whereas if I didn't have that thing tied to me, I could just run the race and sit down with everybody else and we could talk about the race. You know, who won the race, who came in second place or, you know, whatever, or the joy of getting a crown or, you know, a reward. We could do that. But if I do certain things, I can do certain things to weigh myself down. All right. And so faith sets us free so that the fulfillment of God's passion, and I love that word, passion. He has a passion for giving us his goodness. He gave us Jesus to prove that. He has a passion for us walking in the best, living in the best, not gloating about we got this and we got that, but to know that he gave it to us because he's the author of all our joy, to know that he's the one that caused that to happen, to know that he's the one that opened that door. He's the one that brought those people into your life. He's the one that gave you that relationship of wealth. He's the one who gave you that particular assignment and whatever and now is drawing all of this. He's the one. He's the author of all our joy. So let's, let's look at something in the book of Luke real quick, all right, because I don't want to take too much of your time, but I do thank you for these moments and minutes that you're given because it's most important uh, that, we, uh, that we know about faith, a faith, again, that can trust him. See? Uh, Luke chapter 18. Now we use this particular uh, lesson in Jesus teaching us how teaching us that men ought to always pray. And we should, all right? We should pray. Always pray. Always, always. I'll give you a moment on your smartphone, my Bible, I'll beat you there. All right. Luke 18, beginning in verse 1. Now this is Jesus. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray, not faint. Okay? Again, what are we doing? We're not looking at the adversity. I'm going to pray about it. I'm not allowing the adversity, whatever's before me, to cause me to faint. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to always thank God. I'm going to always go to the Lord because God's been good to me. He's saying, there was in the city a judge who feared not God nor regarded man. And uh, there was a widow in that city, and uh, she came to him saying, avenge me of my ad adversary. All right, here we go again. Something that's come against you. And he said, he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear, God, for, fear not God, nor regard man. So he knew that God existed. Isn't that so? Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming. She weary me. And Jesus said, now, hear what the unjust judge said. What did the unjust judge say? He says, I know God, but I don't fear God. And I don't fear any man. But I'll make a judgment because this woman is persistent. I'll make a righteous judgment or a judgment on his part because he wouldn't call it righteous because he didn't fear God. I'll, I'll, I'll make a judgment because Guess what? Her persistence. And Jesus said this, shall not God avenge his own elect? And God is not an unjust judge. Say, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. All right. I tell you that he will avenge them. In other words, he's saying God's goodness is going to show up. He will avenge. God's goodness is going to show up. That which you've lost, that which has been stolen, that which caused you pain, that which caused you disappointment, that which caused you to just not have a word to say, that which caused you shame, you know, guilt and embarrassment, that he's saying God will come and he will cause goodness to happen in your life if you are persistent like this widow. And he says this, he says, I tell you 
that he will avenge them speedily. But then he says this. Here's a declaration Jesus is making. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. In other words, after God has given you or shown you his goodness, will you still have faith or develop faith in your heart to continually trust him no matter what? This is what Jesus is saying. After God gives you that, after you get that house, after you get that new job, after you get this, will you still have faith, develop faith in your heart to trust him? All right? You need to continue to build your faith in him. And this is what Abraham did. Can you imagine? No, you can't. To take your son and go and just say, I'm doing this in the name of the Lord, for the Lord. Everybody around you would think you were crazy. They would say, you're crazy. Don't do that, whatever. And I'm not saying you do that because you don't have a direct promise from God about doing that. But Abraham did. And he had to face all the adversities, you know. And so you and I have to do the very same thing. Now, again, when we understand that nothing is impossible, as the scripture says, the scripture says that, and guess what? People quote it all the time. But how many people have all of the impossible things coming into their life? It's because God didn't tell you about that thing. See, see you didn't get you didn't get a direct promise from him about that. And you can say all you want. Well, I know all things are possible with God, but how many impossible things, how many things over the years have you been believing for or believed for? Now you don't forgot all about it because guess what? It did not take place, but yet you quoted that scripture. This is what I'm saying to you. Knowing God and God being able to show up and say, okay, I see you believing for that. Or, or bringing people into your life that will tell you, oh, you're believing for that. I remember a time, you know, when we first uh, started the ministry and we were in the storefront. And, uh, you know, and I, I remember the day that my wife walked out of the house in front of me. We were going to church, not Faith Christian Center. We hadn't even started the ministry. We, I hadn't even had a thought about uh, FCC at the time. And, uh, we were going to our regular, my regular home church, uh, which my wife, when we got married, she, you know, we were going, she was going more than I was going. And we stepped out of the house one morning and she turned around and she told me, she says, the Lord said that you're not going to get that boat that you want because there's, you won't do what he wants you to do. And I looked at her and laughed, you know, and I, and I told her, I said, well, you know, you're right there and I'm right here. If the Lord wanted to talk to me, he could talk to me. There ain't no but, you know, a foot distance between us, you know. That was my mind at the time. And sometimes when you're not in faith, or you don't understand faith, or when you don't understand the promises of God, somebody else do have to talk to you and tell you something from God, okay? Because you ain't going to, in your mind, you know, you just got your mind. You already got your, you know, your preconceived realities, okay? And, you know, all kinds of things went on. Uh, my mom would, would sign for it. Even after I had given them the down payment, they said everything was fine. Come pick your boat up that Wednesday. I went down to Richmond that Wednesday to pick my boat up. And those people told me, they said, uh, Mr. Rock, uh, you know, we don't know what's going on, but since you signed and we looked at everything Saturday, and I said, but I've already given you the down payment and everything. They said, yeah, we know, but we don't know what's happened. You know, so uh, I uh, called my mom. And uh, a couple of days later, my mom and I went down there, you know, and mom had immaculate, you know, uh, credit. She, you know, she paid everybody on time, everything all the time. She even paid you if you went to the store for her, all right? And uh, they wouldn't even let my mom sign, co-sign for it. And uh, after that, I just said, okay, uh, I'll leave that alone because evidently all of these evidences around me of letting me know that this ain't going to happen because God's put a block on it. All right. He put a block on it. Many years later after that, I'm in the storefront one morning. We've started a ministry. I was probably there for maybe the probably was probably the third year there. And uh, I was just there one morning and a businessman walked in and uh, spoke and we talked. And he says, uh, there's a boat that you want. Uh, and uh, 
the Lord sent me over here to uh, let you have the money for it. And I said, really? And I, my first thought went back to, okay, here's this boat thing again from somebody else. I sat there and I told him, I said, well, we went through this deal and I told him, no, you know, I won't accept this thing that he was offering me and whatever. And then later on, he gave me the money, him and his wife, gave me the money to go buy a boat. Uh, had it all examined, put it in the shop down there. They, I told him, I said, I've never had a boat like this before. They went all over the boat. I had money to pay them for checking out everything on the boat, making sure everything was fine on the boat. And then after that, when we were building this building, our sanctuary, the sanctuary, not the gym building, the Lord shared with me one day and he says, give your boat to that electrician. I went, give my boat to the electrician? Are you kidding me? I had to go home and think about that one all night long. And I came in the next day and uh, and I talked to the guy because he had been talking about fishing. His buddies fish, but you know, sometimes they carry them, sometimes they didn't. And so the next day I walked in and I gave him, I told him, I said, man, I said, I heard you talking. And I said, I have a boat I want to give you. And he says, what? And I said, yeah. I said, I want you to follow me home when you guys finish wiring today. And so he followed me home and uh, we pulled in the yard and pulled around. And uh, that guy got up and he looked at the boat and he sat there and cried. He got some tears in his eyes. And he says, man, nobody's ever given me anything like this. And I said, well, just believe for better. Because I was thinking, I'm giving my boat away. I'm going to have to believe for something better myself. <laughs> you know? And God has, and he always has. And I'm telling, I'm sharing that with you because if you trust him, no matter what you're going through, God will make it happen for you. You just got to trust him. You know? And so, uh, you know, this whole, the next two nights, we're going to be looking at how people handle the goodness of God and how God brought things into their life and how he wanted them to have everything they needed. But even though he did all of that, they still wouldn't in their heart trust him any further than what they had already received. You know, so God bless you tonight. Uh, I thank you for, again, uh, coming on with us. Uh, we're doing a lot of un uh, revealing things and saying things because I know that there are things that you've been believing God for. And I know, all right, I know this, especially for all of you guys that are, you know, members of Faith Christian Center World Outreach. I know what God wants to do for you, okay? But can you trust him past what the doctor said or what you've been through or, you know, you got your home that you always wanted, you know, or you got to live tomorrow, you know, you got your, you know, your car that you want or you got, you know, things are settling life that, you know, that you got it going easy now, whatever. Well, that can hinder you in a way if you, if you just take all that in and say, God's brought me to this place and this is good and you don't believe God for more. Because if you don't need it, I can tell you something. There are millions and millions of people around the world that could use all of that extra that you believe that's coming in your life. They could feed children, they could help give medicine to people, they could help clothe people, that could cause people to have a brighter tomorrow because you did something for them today. So don't ever think that because it's nice, I got it done, it's whatever. You know, God's looking at that like, no, that's not what faith is for. Faith is for you to continue. Remember what he told Abraham? That they'll multiply and multiply and they'll multiply and they'll multiply. There'll be so many blessings on them that they'll just keep on multiplying. And that's the way he wants you to be. Amen. God bless you. Uh, thank you for your time tonight. Hope it didn't take too much, but uh, I believe that it's all uh, invested in uh, uh, ground. I'm trying to help you ground be very valuable so that everything that comes in you will grow, you know, uh, and multiply to the point that you'll have such great harvests in life that, wow, you be going like, look at this. Who would have ever thought in Jesus' name? God bless you. Uh, always tune in. Uh, 7 o'clock for these uh, live streams. Same word, same what? Same time, same Holy Spirit. All right, amen. We'll see you tomorrow night and uh, bring a friend and pass this on because there are people that are believing God and they need to have what they're believing for. Amen. See you tomorrow.